Uh, welcome back to Pokemon Team Videos. This uh, came to us from Samantha Blake, who asked the question, What is Null from Marvel's Pokemon Team? I had to restart this video, so I'm going to be really quick. Null is a being who existed before the beginning of our universe. Came from a thing, place called the Oblivion, where blackness, dark energy, all that stuff existed from. And he was happy there. He was perfectly content. But then lights started to come up. The stars, the Big Bang, all that. And he hates that. He like he hated light, so he basically made his his quest to snuff out the light, killing individuals like celestials, actual deities in the Marvel universe, and spawning the symbiote race. From the head of a fallen celestial, he forged his sword, the All Black Necro Sword, which is a living sentient sword. Uh, he spawned proto symbiotes like the All Knight, the proto the symbiote dragons, so forth and so on. He is. One of the most powerful Marvel villains we've, ever, we've had in recent time. Like, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he, he butchered Thanos, for God's sake. Um, Galactus doesn't want him to uh, mess with this guy if he can help it. So, I, I mean, it, but, I mean, he's not infallible. They did end up beating him in the most recent storyline, I believe it's King in Black storyline. He did end up being defeated. So, but he's, he's an extremely ruthless, powerful, and sadistic and evil individual. So, what Pokemon really represent this guy? Well, there are a couple I need to get out of the way right now for the obvious picks. I wanted a Pokemon that represented a Necro Sword. And luckily, we have a Ghost Sword Pokemon in Honedge. That, I just felt, was the logical choice. Um, it's a Ghost, so it goes in more into that supernatural territory. But it's the only Sword Pokemon we have. And if you're dealing with a character... Who has who's using a sword is a primary facet of them, or a sword is something very attuned to that character. In this case, he created the Necro Sword itself. Then yeah, I, I gotta include that yeah, a Hone Edge on the team. It just fits pretty well with the character. But now that I got that more out of the way, we, let's get into a bit more of the why they're chosen. Now one other one that I did choose. Now this is because. Because he came from darkness, I did want this to be a heavy dark team. I won't, I won't lie here. Normally, I try to, just, I do try to make it fit more with the personality and traits of the character, techniques, all that. And to be fair, coming from a, a place of all darkness, like a, the uh, being an avatar of the Oblivion, if I believe it's called, um, and um, you know, manipulating darkness itself, it makes sense that dark Pokemon would be on the team. And obviously, one of the big popular ones, and one of my personal favorites, Darkrai. Now, when you really look at, well, I'm going to shrink this photo down, just, uh, our image just down a little bit, so we can do a side by side comparison here. When you really look at this guy, I mean, yeah, that's that's a pretty look. He's got the white hair. He's got, I mean, you could just, if you could, you could say this Darkrai maybe has some sort of mutation that it's um, the red. Don't really know collar. Uh, is shaped more like the Venom symbiote, and it's all like, like this is like the closest, like it just aesthetically to uh, no, you have in Pokemon. Like the, you could easily say this is like uh, just this could just be a different variation of Null himself. Quite frankly, if Null himself were a Pokemon, he'd be a Darkrai. That's how much these guys look alike. And I mean, Darkrai is an exceptionally powerful Pokemon. Is he the strongest ever? Oh God, no. But is he immune to things like Psychic, which? You know, gives no uh, it translates into no being immune to things like you know mental manipulation, all that. Absolutely. Although no, Hull is also part of a hive mind with the symbiote, so that can be disrupted. Uh, which then again, it can, it can also disrupt back at other individuals. So it all works out in the end. Uh, but now we get into the more why why I chose them. So. By the way, I will uh, spoil this right up front. There are three legendary Pokemon on this team because they fit up towards Null's ultimate um, uh, Null's ultimate personality and mannerisms. So Null is a very evil, manipulative, uh, and um, mastermind type of character. So I did want a Pokemon that represented, you know, the more manipulating, um, conniving, and the evil aspects. There aren't true, I mean, even though Dark type in Japan is the evil type, there aren't really any true evil Pokemon, per se. That said, between manipulation, being a Dark type, and being evil, Malamar fits that bill, uh, bill very well. Malamar is actually depicted in many episodes of the anime from the Lola I've seen as actually being somewhat evil. Like, it actually is a very a Pokemon with a lot of malice and near hatred to it. So, and it is a Pokemon that does, she ha makes up evil schemes. Uh, it, it, it's even in its Pokedex entry. Let me get Malamar's Pokedex entry 
up here very quickly. Melamar. Uh, Melamar. Okay. Let me just get let me get his Pokedex entry up here real quick for um, you know descriptive. Okay. Yeah. It wields the most compelling hypnotic powers of any Pokemon. It forces others to do whatever it wants. Like controlling symbiote um, hosts, for instance. It lures play close hypnotic uh, motions. It rats ten ground before finishing off with the digestive fluids. Uh, that's that's from the um, X and Y Gen six decks. Um, from Gen seven Ultra Sun Ultra Moon. When it comes to starting another uh, hypnosis, there's an endless number of people who utilize Malamar for their nefarious deeds. It flashes patterns to a torso to control its prey and draw them in. The edge of fins, the fins are supremely sharp. You can reference the Necrosaur with that. And then Sword and Shield, gazing at its luminescent spots will quickly induce a hypnotic state, putting the uh, observer under Malamar's control. Seven Malamar's hypnotic power, powers played a role in history in changing events. So, yeah, it's a Pokemon that's extremely manipulative. Um, uh, it's, yeah, it's not... Uh, and it's very dark. Like it's, you know, people use it for various purposes, and it seems not mind at all. So Malamar fit the bill very well for me. Next, I want a Pokemon that represented uh, ancient, and both the other two Pokemon, the two legendaries that I have on this list, do are also obviously all most legendaries are ancient on some level, so they represent ancient. But I want something that again has a lot of malice, is by all accounts technically evil to some degree, and is if possible a dark type. And the Pokemon that fit that uh, uh, fit that uh, headline very well, or fit that uh, job description, that was a term I was looking for, is Spiritomb. Spiritomb is, is a very, you know, notoriously kind of evil-like Pokemon. Um, and Dynamo is foreign uh, by 108 spirits. It's bound to a fissure in an odd Keith Stone. It, it's constant mischief and misdeeds resulted in it being bound in odd a keystone. It was for, um, it's, yeah, they keep saying constant mischief and uh, misdeeds. A Pokemon that was for, it's, yeah, they keep saying it misdeeds for 500 years ago. Like, it's, it's an old Pokemon. And it seems to have that, again, that, um, that wicked streak that uh, a Null would have. But it also has the age on it, too. It's a ancient you know, mischievous, kind of almost evil spirit, almost evil spirit. It's not truly evil. Like there's very, like I said, there's no true evil Pokemon, but there are Pokemon that are definitely more of a handle than others. Add on to the fact that it's also pretty, I mean, it's bound to the Keystone, but its body is incorporeal, which represents the uh, Null's ability to manipulate dark energy, all that. And there, there you have uh, a Pokemon that perfectly fits Null's team, in my opinion. So now we have our last two. Like I said, these are two legendary Pokemon because they both fit. So I knew immediately I needed a Pokemon that represented Grendel slash basically his symbiote dragons. I'm like, okay, let me look at the dragon type Pokemon. And I'm looking, I'm like, okay, Hydreigon's a dark type, but that's not really going to work. He doesn't have really Hydro-based Pokemon. And there's no, there isn't a symbiote Pokemon either. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm shocked or surprised, that we haven't got one yet, but I am, I, I don't know, I wouldn't say I'm not surprised. I'm a little surprised we haven't got one yet. Maybe Gen 9 comes around, we'll get a symbiote Pokemon. So I'm looking, I'm like, well, actually, Giratina's origin form very much looks like, first off, its wings look like something you'd see from a symbiote. They look like all black tendrils. It is a very draconic, serpentine uh, dragon. Uh, it's, a, it's a ghost type, so it fits into the dark aspect of um, Null's team, Null's personality. It, it looks like a harbinger of death, basically. Uh, and you know what? Good for it. I've always loved Giratina. Giratina, particularly in its origin form, is a pretty beast-looking Pokemon. I, I, I've always liked Giratina as a whole. So, ultimately, that is, uh, that represented the, the uh, symbiote dragons, is, uh, Giratina. Finally, we have our last Pokemon. Now, this Pokemon, ultimately, is a representation of of everything, really, that Null stands for. Snuffing up light. In the All Black, or uh, King and Black storyline, he blocked out the sun with a wall of symbionts. That's how, like, messed up and evil he hates the light and all that. Um, and, you know, how far he'll go to just w snuff it out and wipe it out. So, I'm like, okay, thinking on it, there's only one Pokemon that fits that description. Something that actually feeds on light, snuffs out the light. And that is Necrozma. 
Uh, now, particularly just the base form of Necrozma, because Ultra Necrozma is a true form of Necrozma, I, I don't think qual really works, because that is a Pokemon now kind of made of light, whereas that's not the case here. He is kind of stuck in his obsidian form, which darkens as uh, he hasn't absorbed light in a while. And now, granted, it's not a complete one-to-one -one comparison between him and Null, because Null just snuffs out light, doesn't eat light or anything like that, whereas, Null, uh, whereas uh, Necrozma actually does feed on the light. But it does make the most sense. He goes out, seeks light to absorb it all up. This is a Pokemon that could probably absorb the sun if we weren't careful. And that's that'd be dangerous. Uh, so ultimately, Necrozma, I think, perfectly fit on Null's team. Not just from a design standpoint, because really from a design standpoint, he works out very well. But also from his actual, you know, whole idea, whole purpose is to, you know, eat and absorb light. Or snuff out the light, which is what Null wants to do. So, Hone Edge for the Necrosword. Darkrai, because it looks pretty damn close to, uh, to uh, Null to begin with. Spear Tomb for the ancient, uh, for how old the Pokemon is, the ghost and dark type, and uh, the fact that it's pretty much living dark energy. Malamar for its even more nefarious purposes. Giratina to represent symbiote dragons. And Necrozma to represent the, absor uh, the snuffing out of the light and, you know, the whole all black style of necro uh, of uh, null to begin with so that whoop went a little far on that that is no well oh, crud uh <laughs> one second i must have i think i grabbed the wrong one that's what yeah this is exactly what it did whoop all right let's try that again uh and that is null's pokemon team in my opinion but ultimately that is just my opinion what do you think Null's Pokemon team would be? Put in the comments below, let me know. But thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. As always, if you want to review something, put in the comments below, let us know the review of it at some point. Hit that bell if you want to be notified, and I'll see you folks next time. Later.